Hello, my name is Brother Julius of the Israel of God Bible Study class here in Chicago. To my right is my reader, Brother Daniel, also of the Israel of God Bible Study class here in Chicago. Today's lesson, sisters and brothers, is called God's Free Health Plan, the Dietary Law. Again, God's Free Health Plan, the Dietary Law. We're going to show you through the Word of God that there is a difference between what we eat and what we think. Now, God is a God of wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, and he does not do anything in vain. So when he gave us a dietary law, which has been forgotten, but then used when it benefits people who wants the Bible to fit their format, it does not work like that. He gave us a dietary law. He gave us laws, statutes, and commandments whereby we may live. And not die, sisters and brothers. This man was not created to die. So because man sinned, death entered in. So now God gave us another type of law to give us longevity, long life. And it will lead to eternal life as well as his words. We're going to begin this in Romans, the 12th chapter. Romans, the 12th chapter. And keep in mind, God's free health plan. It is free because the word of God is free, sisters and brothers. All you got to do is open up your Bibles and read. Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 1 and 2. And this does not cost you anything. It don't cost you anything to read. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Go ahead, Brother Dan. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service. Now, look at Paul. This is Paul to the church in Rome. He said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, because your body is supposed to be the temple of the Holy Spirit. So whatever you put in your body, that old saying, you are what you eat, the Lord literally means that. Continue, my brother. And be not conformed to this world, uh -huh. but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes. That ye may prove what is that good. Yes. And acceptable and perfect will of God. Notice what it says, that you be conformed. To, don't be conformed to this world, because this world is going to hell in a handbasket. You see the infrastructure falling down. You see times are getting worse and worse, murders, all kinds of things that are contrary to the word of God. But the God created this heavens and this earth. It was beautiful. It was good in so much that he said it was very good. So how has it gone bad? Because of the mindset of man and what we have been eating. We have been, we are in trouble and we are dying right now, sisters and brothers, because somebody in the garden ate something that they weren't supposed to eat and that brought death. Hence this lesson, the dietary law. But he said, this is our reasonable service. It is not hard to serve God. It is not, it's not hard to obey him. All you got to do is believe on him, read his word, and walk in it. Let's move on, Dan. Let's go to 3 John. 3 John. 3 John, and we're going to begin reading at verse 2. Sisters and brothers, people don't understand that God gave us everything for our good, for our well-being. And when we detour or deviate from the word of God, you have nothing left but tragedy, either now or in the future. But it's going to come because we can do something that God can't do. We can lie. The Bible says it's impossible for God to lie. Let's move, Dan. 3 John 2, read it. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee. Yes. Even as thou walkest in the truth. Now he said, I wish that you may prosper and be in health. Not just spiritual health, sisters and brothers, but physical health. This is what the Lord wants for. This is the will of the Father. That I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. You can't get any more abundantly than eternal life. But even in this flesh and blood, you can have long life, which is also abundant. Let's move on to Genesis, the first chapter, and let's look at the plan of the Godhead. The plan of the Godhead, sisters and brothers. Genesis chapter 1, and we're going to begin reading at verse 26, because God got a plan. And the plan is to create God. Well, you tell people that, and they got a problem with it. But think about it. If Adam had not sinned, would there be death? 
There will only be eternal life. We have blown the mission and we are suffering greatly for it. Sin is all over the place. Verse 26. Go ahead, my brother. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Yes. And over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now, man is made in the image and likeness of God, but not out of what God is made of. Man is made from dust. God, what he's made of, he calls his spirit. And spirit don't die. But, there are, but dust dies. He said that man became well. We, let's let the Bible speak. Continue, my brother. So God created man in his own image. Yes. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Go ahead. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. But so God fixed this earth and put man on it, created the man, and gave this man dominion over the works of his hands, over everything, everything that lives, everything that breathes, he put it in man's hands. Because man was supposed to be the superintendent of the earth. Continue, my brother. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth. Yes. And every tree, in which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed. Yes. To you it shall be for me. Now, think about it. Man was not supposed to eat flesh. In the beginning, man did not eat flesh. He said, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree, and every fruit of the tree. For you it shall be for meat. So man and the beast were vegetarians and fruitarians. We ate nuts and grains and berries and the fruits. It wasn't no meat because sin had not been committed. But continue, my brother. And to every beast of the earth. Yes. And to every fowl of the air. And to everything that creepeth upon the earth. Yes. Wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat. And it was so. Notice he keep telling you again. I created you vegetarians and fruitarians, and it was so. One more verse, my brother. Go ahead. And God saw everything that he had made. Yes. And behold, it was very good. It was very good. Even this man was very good. Go ahead, bro. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Let's move on to Genesis, the second, the second chapter. You see, sisters and brothers, everything that God does has a purpose. He is not a vain God. He is not like man. He does everything for a reason and a purpose, and it's all for his glory. Even the creation of this man is for his glory. Genesis chapter 2, and let's pick it up at verse 16 and 17. And we're going to look at one commandment that he gave this man, and we couldn't even do it. Hence, we're in trouble, and death is here. Go ahead, Dan. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Yes. But of the, tr but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, pay attention to what we just read. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden, you can eat of all the trees. You can even eat of the tree of life. That was a tree that was in the garden also, which represented Jesus, the Christ himself. Mm -hmm. Also, the, but don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, of the knowledge of good and evil, which represents Satan, the devil. Don't listen to this guy. We blew the mission. So now he said, the day that you eat of this tree and God can't lie, you shall surely die. We didn't believe it. Let's move on, Brother Dan. Let's go to Isaiah, the 55th chapter. Isaiah, the 55th chapter. Because, sisters and brothers, we have a problem. And the problem is we don't want to hear. We want to fix the word of God to fit our format. And we don't want to hear his word, which is ordained unto life. Isaiah, the 55th chapter, and begin reading at verse 1, my brother. Go ahead. Ho, oh, every one that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that have no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Yes. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread? Yes. And your labor for that which satisfies not. Look at the Lord say, he is no respecter of a person. I want everybody who's hungry. Everybody who's thirsty, this is spiritual knowledge that we have to ingest, which is his word. Come and get it. You don't need no money for this. Come and drink this water, the living water, which is the word of God. You don't have to have money, a bank account for this. It is free. All you got to do is come. Go ahead, Dan. Hearken diligently unto me. Yes. And eat ye that which is good. 
How? How do you eat? You eat two ways. You eat with your mouth. That's the physical eating. But then you eat with your mind. That's why Jesus said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Eat this word. He told Ezekiel to eat the book. Eat the roll. He didn't say, put it in your mouth and start chewing it. In other words, read, sisters and brothers. Simply read and pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And then you're getting that spiritual knowledge. Go ahead, Dan. And let your soul delight itself in fatness. Yes, which is the word of God. Go ahead. Incline your ears. Yes. And come unto me. Yes. Here in your soul shall live. Yes. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Yes. Even the sure mercies of David. But he said, come and eat and drink that which is good. His word, even the physical food that he gave us, which was at that time, herbs of the field and the grains of the ground. Let's continue. Let's go to Daniel, the first chapter, and give you a perfect example of what we were not supposed, what Daniel did, what we have departed from. Daniel, the first chapter. You see, sisters and brothers, there's nothing new under the sun. All you got to do is read. The Old Testament is an example of how we should live. But it's also an example of the rewards of disobedience. Go back and read the Old Testament. Look what happened to the people that disobeyed God. They were killed. They would not be in that first resurrection. But the ones that obeyed him, they got the promotions. They got the mercy. They get eternal life. Daniel, the first chapter. And let's begin reading that verse one. Go ahead, Dan. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, yes. king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, yes. king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And besieged it. Skip down to verse three and continue. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel. Yes. And of the king's seed and of the princes. Go ahead. Children in whom was no blemish. No blemish. Go ahead. But well favored. Yes. And skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science. You mean science was in the Old Testament? Absolutely, sisters and brothers. Go ahead. And such... And such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace. Yes. In whom they might teach the learning in the tongue of the Chaldeans. So now, Nebuchadnezzar conquered Jerusalem. So he got the best of the people. It's just like our president has a cabinet. So his cabinet consists of different people with different skill sets. So Nebuchadnezzar wanted the wisest and the smartest people in his cabinet to help run his administration. There's no different. There's nothing new under the sun. Continue, my brother. Verse 4. Verse 5. Go ahead. And the king appointed them a daily provision of uh -huh. the king's meat. Yes. And of the wine which he drank. Yes. So nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. So this was the three-year program that Nebuchadnezzar set up for the children of captivity, the children of Israel, or the Jews. And so he got Daniel and some of his friends, the, the wisest people, so they can learn the, turn, the, turn, the tongue of the Chaldeans so that they can be useful in his administration. Go ahead, bro. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. We know them better as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel's name was Belteshazzar. Skip down to verse 8 and read it. Go ahead, bro. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. Now, I want you to underline defile. Highlight and underline, underline defile. Daniel would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat because Nebuchadnezzar's menu was unclean. Just like Satan's menu is unclean. Go ahead, Dan. Nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the Enochs that he might not defile himself. So he, Daniel didn't want to defile himself because he knew the dietary law that God gave in the Old Testament. All the prophets knew about these things, sisters and brothers. Skip down to verse 10 and continue, my brother. Go ahead. And the prince of the Enoch said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king yes. who has appointed your meat and your drink. Yes. For why should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your sword? Yes. Then shall you make me in danger endanger my head to Listen, the king. Listen, I hear what you're saying, Daniel, but my head is on the chopping block. And if you don't eat of what the king commanded me to give you guys, then... and you begin to get sickly, then my head, he's going to behead me. But look what Daniel said. Go ahead. Then Daniel said to Melzar, whom the prince of the Enix has set over Daniel. Yes. Hananiah, Mishael, and Azari. Yes. Prove thy servants. I beseech thee ten days and let them give us posts to eat. Yes. And water to drink. Now, he said, because 
God had gave Daniel favor in the eyes of the Chaldeans. He said, give us a chance. Give us 10 days. Give us 10 days to prove ourselves and look at our faces afterwards. Go ahead, Dan. Then let our, then let our countenances be looked upon before thee. Yes. And the countenance of the children, the eat of the portion of the king's meat. Yes. And as thou seest, deal with thy servants. Now, that's a lot to deal with. You are actually sacrificing your life. Give us a chance to prove, to separate ourselves from the rest of the children. You give us some soup to eat, and you let the rest of the children of captivity compare us to them and what they're eating in 10 days and see if there's a difference. Continue, Dan. So he consented to them in this matter. Yes. And proved them 10 days. See, God gives favor. He's merciful. He gives favor. Learn the lessons in these things, sisters and brothers. Go ahead. And at the end of ten days, their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh yes. than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. You see, what it, you see how the Bible shows you you are what you eat? Sisters and brothers, if you're eating unclean things, that makes you unclean, and therefore you defy yourself, and in the eyes of God, you are unclean. We're going to read that a little bit later, but this is the book. We read in the book. He said, prove your, prove, just give us a chance. So therefore, I tested it. When I stopped eating the pork and the catfish and the shrimp and the lobster, I felt better. I had more energy. Just because it looks good don't mean that it is good. What verse we at, brother? We were at uh, 16. Read it. Thus Mel, th thus Mel thar took away the portion of their meat. Yes. And the wine that they should drink. Yes. And gave them pulse. So that's what Daniel them ate all the time that they was in Babylon. As a matter of fact, more than that, after the Lord, because Nebuchadnezzar was converted through the righteousness of Daniel. So therefore, sisters and brothers, the Lord gave the mercy, so he took away and said, hey, wait, maybe they, these guys are on to something. Maybe they God is who he say he is. See, sisters and brothers, our behavior has the ability through the word of God to convert people of other nations, of other nations. So we're doing our job. Skip down to verse 19 and read it, Dan. And the king communed with them. Yes. And among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, yes. Mishael, and Azariah. Yes. Therefore stood they before the king. Because they had proven themselves, sisters and brothers. This was after three years. So now they were worthy. So now they stood before the king. And all of a sudden they got favor with the king. Look, look how well favored they were. Go ahead. One more verse. Go ahead, bro. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were, all, that were in all his realm. Why? Because of their diets. Their diets proved their be, helped their behavior. Not drunken, sober-minded, well thought of, clear thinking, reasonable. You are what you eat. What you eat affects your thinking, affects your behavior. We ask the question all the time, why did God give us two legs? To carry our brains around, sisters and brothers. To carry your brain around. Then from the brain comes all the thought and the process center comes your hands. He gave you two hands. That is your works. Everything that you do. So read verse one more. And look what Daniel's dietary law did for him at verse 21. Go ahead, bro. And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. Daniel was an old man. So Daniel lived all the way up into the Persian Empire, sisters and brothers, from Nebuchadnezzar to the Persian Empire. That's a lot of years. But that's what the dietary law is designed for. It is designed for long life, obedience, righteousness, and eventually, which will lead to eternal life. Same thing as the word of God. Long life, longevity, eternal life. That's the menu of God. It is righteous, it is good, it is healthy, it is holy, and it leads to eternal life. Let's move on, Daniel. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter. This is why I love this word, sisters and brothers, because this book teaches you how to live, teaches you how to show you how to get out of problems, show you how to defend yourself, show you how to get eternal life. And that's what we're all working for. Deuteronomy 6, chapter, and let's begin reading at verse 24. Go ahead, my brother. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God. Yes. For our good always. For our what? For our good always. Notice, the commandments is for your good. Think about it. Even in our civil world today, you have to not run a stop sign so that you don't get into an accident. 
You have to eat right so you can stay away from the doctor. You have to obey the laws of man and pay your taxes for your good. Everything is predicated off of one of the Ten Commandments. Let me say that again. You're trying to do away with the Ten Commandments. You're doing away with your peace. You are doing away with your liberty. The Ten Commandments is set up to show you what sin is. It points out what sin is. It's for your good. It's for your peace. It's for your well-being. How dare us say we don't need the commandments, laws, and statutes of God? That means you reject God. So the only other thing for you is death. Continue, Dan. What verse was that? We're uh, in the middle of 21. Continue. That he might preserve us alive as it is at this day. Yes. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God. See, it's not our righteousness. It's the Lord's righteousness. Our righteousness is like a filthy rat. But when we lean on the Lord's righteousness and walk in it, it's the Lord's righteousness, which is good for us. Go ahead, Dan. As he have commanded us. Yes. Continue at verse uh, uh, that's the 24, 25. That's okay, 24, let's move on. So the dietary law is just like the commandments of God. It's for our good and for our righteousness, which is the Lord's righteousness. Let's move on and let's find out what is deemed clean and unclean by the God of Israel, the God of this Bible, even Jesus. Leviticus, the 11th chapter. Sisters and brothers, some of this is going to be offensive. I got to warn you. But what did Jesus tell you in Matthew, the 24th chapter? What did he say unto us in Luke, the first, uh, 21st chapter? Many shall be offended because of me. Sisters and brothers, the word of God is designed to correct you or offend you into righteousness. But it starts with the renewing of the mind. That's why he said, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Leviticus 11 and begin reading at verse 1. Now, Julius didn't write this. Brother Daniel didn't write this. The Israel of God didn't write this. This is the word of God. So if you got a problem, your problem is not with us. Your problem is with God himself. Write a letter to him and see if you get a response. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them. Yes. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying. Yes. These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Now, he's giving you a dietary law because sin is here. Because sin is here, something has to die. So now the Lord put meat on the table. In another lesson, you, we can show you that more perfectly. But go ahead, Dan. Three. Whatsoever parteth the who? One. And is cloven footed. That's two. And chew of the cud. Yes. Among the beasts that ye shall eat. Now, he said, whatever part of the hoof, it's got to have a split hoof. It's got to have it, it chews the cud. That means it regurgitates what it, uh, what it eats and then redigest, we chews it and redigest it. And then it's got a set the way it, the animal feet is made, which is um, not only part of the hoof, but it's clothing footed. That shall ye eat. It must have three characteristics. Come on, Dan. Nevertheless, these shall you. These shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud. Yes. Or of them that divide the hoof. Yes. As the camel. Yes. Because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the hoof. He is unclean unto you. So he got one out of the three characteristics. He's unclean. Go ahead. And the coney. Yes. Because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof. He is unclean unto you. Now, whatever this coney is, it's got a hoof. He chewed the cud, but he don't divide the hoof. He don't qualify. He's unclean. Go ahead. And the hare, because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the hoof. He is unclean unto you. Now let's learn something on our way to learning something. And the hare. Now we have been traditionally taught that a hare is a rabbit. But that can't be, because rabbits have paws. Read that again, Dan. And the hare. Yes. Because he cheweth the cud. Yes. But divided not the hoof. How is a rabbit has a hoof? Something is wrong. We have been mistaught. So, sisters and brothers, if we've been mistaught about what a hare is and that it's a rabbit, is it possible we could be mistaught about a whole lot of other things? Continue, Dan. He is unclean unto you. He's unclean unto you. Go ahead. And the swine. Here we go. Though he divided the hoof and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. Yes. He is unclean to you. Now, the swine has two out of the three characteristics, yet the Lord say he is unclean unto you. Everybody knows that a swine is the hog or what we call the pig. And that is one of the most consumed beasts upon the face of the earth. Bacon. 
Have you noticed all the commercials, they have an increase in the bacon? Mm -hmm. Bacon, bacon, bacon. Everything, pork, mm -hmm. ham, pork chops. They wave it in front of your face on the job and say, hey, look at this right here. I say, okay, enjoy, enjoy. I don't judge nobody. I don't condemn nobody. I, I just say to myself, uninformed, uninformed, uninformed. Read that seven again. Go ahead. And the swine. Yes. Though he divided the hoof and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. Yes. He is unclean to you. He is unclean. The Lord said, the Lord calls him unclean. So it's not, I was born and raised in Arkansas. We had hog-killing days. I used to slop the hogs. And we gave him the eggshells. We gave him the dirty dishwater. A hog is a garbage disposal. He is a scavenger. Unclean. Unclean, sisters and brothers. Look what else the Lord said about the swine. Go ahead. Eight. Of their flesh shall ye not eat. Yes. And their carcass shall ye not touch. Go ahead. They are unclean to you. Notice all this. Why all this about the swine? Because it is no accident that it is the most eaten product on the face, beast on the, on the face of the earth. Go ahead. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Yes. Whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters, in the seas and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. Look what the Lord said. First he dealt with the beasts of the field. Now he dealing with everything in the waters, water or aquatic life. Whatever have fins and scales, that is two characteristics. It cannot have fins. It didn't say fins or scales. It said fins and scales, sisters and brothers. The Lord know what he's doing. He know his creation. Go ahead. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers. Yes. Of all that move in the waters. Yes. And of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. Now, I, write, I want you to write down and highlight the word abomination. An abomination, listen carefully. An abomination is anything that is contrary to the word of God. Anything that is opposite of the word of God. Defile and abomination. Two key words. Go ahead, Dan. They shall be even an abomination unto you. Yes. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, but ye, but ye shall have their carcasses in abomination. Go ahead. Whatsoever have no fins, nor scales in the waters, that shall be an abomination unto you. So the Lord said it must have fins and scales. We love catfish. He is unclean. He is a bottom dweller. He has fins, but he don't have no scales. He is a scavenger, sisters and brothers. The Lord uses, he is one that the Lord uses to clean the waters. You can't eat shrimp, sisters and brothers. They found out, I did the research, shrimp and lobster tail has more cholesterol in it than anything in the waters. Think about it. Everything that the Lord says for us not to eat, we love it. And everything that we, uh, that he says, Eat, we don't want it. Even his word, sisters and brothers, which is ordained unto eternal life. Continue, Dan. Now he gave you the aquatic life. Go ahead. And these are they which you should have an abomination among the fowls. Now, these are they which you should have an abomination among the fowls. You ask the person what is the fowl, they're going to say, well, it's a bird. It's more than just a bird. Let me give you a definition of what a fowl is. A fowl is anything that flies. Repeat that. A fowl is anything that flies. The fly, the mosquito, the ladybug, the birds with feathered. Well, let's let the Bible speak. Good, let's deal with the feather fowls. Go ahead, Dan. They shall not be eaten. Yes. They are an abomination. Go ahead. The eagle and the, and the ostrich and the osprey and the vulture and the kite after his kind. Go ahead. Every raven after his kind. Yes. And the owl and the night hawk and the cuckoo. And the hawk after his kind. Yes. And the little owl. And the cormorant. And the great owl. So now he gave you all of the birds of prey. Or the carnivorous birds. These are scavengers that eat dead things, sisters and brothers. They are unclean. But this is only the feathered fowls. Let's deal with some more feathered fowl. Watch this one right here. Go ahead. And the swan. And the what? Swan. Go ahead. And the pelican. And the gear eagle. Now, a swan is a... You know how you like the duck dinner and the geese dinner? A duck is a swan with a short neck, and a geese or a goose is a swan with a long neck. They are unclean. Why? Because we just read it. The Lord said they're unclean. Go ahead, Dan. 
19. Yes. And the stork. Yes. The heron after the hurricane. Yes. And the lapweed. Yes. And the bat. Now, those, the mammals, the bat, he is unclean. You can't eat bats, but over in Australia, you have the aborigines who eat bats. They are an abomination. They are unclean because God is the one that ordained them unclean. Continue, Dan. All fowls that creep. See, remember, more than what type of fowl. All fowls that creep. Go ahead. Going upon all four shall be an abomination unto you. Go ahead. Yet these may eat of every flying, creeping thing that goeth upon all four. Go ahead, Dan. Which have legs above their feet to leap with all upon the earth. Now, this is the other type of fowl. We call them insects. But these got four feet to leap, and they got wings to fly. They are foul. Go ahead. Even these of them ye may eat. Yes. The locust after his kind. Yes. And the ball locust after his kind. Yes. And the beetle after his kind. Yes. And the grasshopper after his kind. Sisters and brothers. People say, well, that's nasty, brother Julius. I wouldn't eat no grasshoppers. It depends on who you listening to. The God of this Bible said that they are clean. Now, you might have to eat a lot of them to get full, but still, they are clean. What, what did John the Baptist eat? Wild honey and locust. Read your Bible. Read your Bible, sisters and brothers. And the beetle out there is kind. So the locust out there is kind. Now, here's the difference. Verse 23, go ahead. But all other flying, creeping things which have four feet shall be an abomination unto you. Sisters and brothers, why are we reading all of this? Because the same way that we teach everything else, it is in the Bible. It's in the Bible. God knows what he's doing, sisters and brothers. Skip down to verse 29 and read it. These also shall be unclean unto you among the creeping things that creep upon the earth. Yes. The weasel. Yes. And the mouse. Yes. And the tortoise after its kind. Did you like that turtle soup? You can't have that. You got people that eat weasel. You got people that eat mice. And in some countries, they are regarded as gods. Go ahead. And the fairy. Yes. And the chameleon. And the lizard. And the snail and the mole. You know that escargot you like? The snails? Unclean. Think about it. The more money that we, meet, that we make, the more that we eat unclean things. I like being poor. I like being poor. Keep me poor so I can stay in God's dietary law. But when I become a millionaire or a billionaire, all of a sudden I want the exotic foods. The mind. The mind, sisters and brothers. The Lord works through the mind. He works through the mind to save the mind, to save you. Satan works through the mind to deceive you, to destroy you. The mind. Consume this with your mind. Go ahead, Dan. These are unclean to you among all that creep. Yes. Whosoever do have touched them. When they be dead, they shall be unclean until the evening. Now skip down to verse 41 and read, Dan. And every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth shall be an abomination. Yes. It shall not be eaten. Yes. Whatsoever goeth upon the belly, and whatsoever goeth upon all four. Yes. Or whatsoever have more feet among all creeping things that creep upon the earth. Yes. Them shall ye not eat. Yes. For they are an abomination. You see, sisters and brothers, you can't eat snake. You can't eat earthworms. You can't eat nothing that crawls up on the belly. All of this is an abomination before God. Continue. Ye shall not make yourselves abominable with any creeping thing that creepeth. Neither shall ye make yourselves unclean with them. That ye shall be defiled thereby. So you are what you eat, sisters and brothers. You eat unclean and you defile yourself. In God's eyes, you are unclean. Go ahead. For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves and ye shall be holy. For I am holy. Yes. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Skip down to verse 46 and read it. This is the law of the beast and of the fowl and of every living creature that moveth in the water. Yes. And of every creature that creepeth upon the earth. To do what? To make a difference between the unclean and the clean. And between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. Go back to Genesis, the seventh chapter on your own time. And you will read where the Lord told Noah, take the clean animals in by sevens and the unclean in by two. The male and his female. No such thing as that two by two. You got to say what the book says. The clean by the sevens, male and female, and the unclean in by two. One male and one female to keep seed alive upon the, upon the face of the earth. Let's move on. So that is the dietary law of everything in the creation which may be eaten and which may not be eaten. Let's move on to Exodus, the 23rd chapter. Exodus, the 23rd chapter. And we're going to pick it up just a little bit. Exodus, the 23rd chapter. And we're going to read two verses out of there. 
Exodus, the 23rd chapter, and we're going to be begin reading at verse 24, Dan. Go ahead when you get it. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, yes. nor serve them, yes. nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them, and quite break down their images. Yes. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread. He shall bless thy what? Bread. Yes. And thy water. Yes. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Sisters and brothers, have you not noticed that there are heart disease, high blood pressure, gout, arthritis, rheumatism? You know where all this comes from? It's just a case of hogitis. You are what you eat. The pig carried the trichnosis. It gets a cyst into your, it builds a cyst, a nest in your bloodstream, in your muscle tissue, and it hardens. That's why they tell you to cook your food well. But you cannot make something clean by praying over it that God ordained unclean. So then it gets into your system and it makes you sick. And it comes in the form of these various diseases, sisters and brothers. So the Lord say, keep my commandments. That's his word. And I will bless your food. I will bless your water. And sickness won't come upon you. Just like Adam blew the mission when the Lord said, don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good or evil. So the Lord is not going to go against himself. He said, death, you shall surely die. Graveyard full of dead peoples. God can't lie. Dietary law. God cannot lie. Let's move on, Dan. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. And let's look at what our ancestor did in the wilderness. 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. Sisters and brothers, take heed to the word of God. He cannot lie. He is going to execute everything that he said he's going to do. He did it in the Old Testament. He's going to do it in our day and time. 1 Corinthians 10 and begin reading that verse 1. Go ahead, Dan. Moreover, brethren. I would not I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud. Yes. And all passed through the sea. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Yes. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. Yes. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. And that rock was Christ. Jesus did not start at Mary. He came through Mary, sisters and brothers. But it was him in the Old Testament that brought him through the Red Sea. That had his angels in the pillar of fire by night and in the cloud by day. But it was the Lord that was back there, sisters and brothers. Read verse 5, Dan. Go ahead. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. Yes. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. They were overthrown because of disobedient and unbelief, sisters and brothers. And all that is for our example. All of it was for our examples. Go ahead, Dan. Go ahead. Now, these things were our examples. To the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they are also lusted. Go ahead. Neither be idolaters, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to party. It ain't no difference today. We love partying. We love partying and eating all kind of unclean things. And this is what got us in trouble with our God, because he's a holy God. Continue. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed. And fell in one day, three and twenty thousand. Did you know you could commit spiritual fornication as well as physical fornication? Spiritual fornication is serving another God. Do it contrary with what the God of this Bible has written. Now you have adopted the spirit of the Nicolaitans. What is that in Revelation, the uh, second chapter? That is the spirit of compromise. Oh, you can serve God and do whatever you want to do. It ain't going to happen. Not going to happen. Skip. Continue to read. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. So don't tempt Christ like they tempted Christ by then, and the Lord sent some of them things. Go ahead. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, yes. and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happen unto them for examples. Yes. And they are written for our admission, upon whom the end of the world are come. So now all of these happening in the Old Testament is for our day and time, the last days. For our example, sisters and brothers, that we should not tip God. Don't play with God. Do not mock God. He will deal with you. You can get by for a long time, but payday is coming. Let's move on, Dan. Let's go to Psalm 105. Let's look at what the Lord did for them in the wilderness. Psalm 105. And let's look at what this God of Israel, who loved his people tremendously and did for them in the wilderness. Got, we got Bibles in our houses and won't even read them. But then time, things go bad. We want to look for God. Oh, Lord, have mercy. 
I did have mercy. I told you thou shalt not. You can't get no more merciful than that. So now when the drama come, we cry out to the Lord. 105, begin reading that verse 1. Go ahead, Dan. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Yes. Call upon his name. Yes. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Yes. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice to seek the Lord. Yes. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face evermore. Continue. Remember his marvelous works that he have done. Yes. His wondrous and the judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Abraham his servant. Yes. The children of Jacob his chosen. He is the Lord. Skip down. We're going to skip down to verse 13 and go ahead. When they went from one nation to another. This is Israel in the wilderness. Go ahead. From one kingdom to another people. Yes. He suffered no man to do them wrong. Go ahead. Yet he reproved kings for their sakes. Yes. Saying, touch not mine anointed. And do my prophets no harm. Don't don't put your hands on my people and don't do my prophet no harm. Because when you mess with Israel, I'm talking about the real Israel. You are messing with the apple of God's eye and he is a collector, sisters and brothers. You will not get away from it. That's why you vex yourselves. When you kick against these commandments, laws and statutes, all you're doing is vexing yourself, sisters and brothers. Skip down to verse 36, Dan, and go ahead. He smote all the firstborn in their land. Come out of the land of Egypt. Go ahead. The chief of all their strength. Go ahead. He brought them forth also with silver and gold. Yes. And there was no unfeeble person among their tribes. Egypt was glad when they departed. Egypt was glad when they departed. Go ahead. For the fear of them fell upon them. Go ahead. He spread a cloud for a covering and fire to give light in the night. We read that. Go ahead. The people asked and he brought quails and satisfied them with the bread of heaven. Notice he brought quails. Clean foul. Clean foul. Go ahead. He opened the rock, and the waters gushed out. They ran in the dry places like a river. He gave them fresh water to drink, sisters and brothers. Think about it. Forty years long, the Lord walked Israel through the wilderness, and the book says that their clothes did not deteriorate, their shoes did not deteriorate, and their ankles and feet did not swell. You know why? Because God was feeding them, and God was uh, giving them water to drink. You think you gonna give, he going to give his children unclean stuff? Forty years long, they died out of existence, sisters and brothers, but they died old. They died old, sisters and brothers. Let's move, Dan. Proverbs, the 21st chapter. Oh, for those who think that you could drink anything and get away with it, he got something for you too. Proverbs, the 21st chapter. The book tell you, don't try to master strong drink. It will master you because it's going to make you drunk. Now, what you consume in your mouth is going to interfere with your thinking. Now you're going to get behind the wheel and your vehicle becomes a weapon. Let's go, Dan. Proverbs 21, verse 18. Go ahead. The wicked shall be ransomed for the righteous. Go ahead. And the transgressor for the upright. Yes. It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with the, con than with the contentious and an angry woman. Go ahead. There is treasure to be desired, and oil in the dwelling of the wise. But a foolish man spendeth it up. Go ahead. He that followeth after righteousness and mercy findeth life, righteousness and honor. Now pay attention to what we just read, sisters and brothers. You keep the laws, statutes, and commandments. This whole Bible is about eternal life. It's about good life. But you're going to get behind the wheel and become a drunkard. And the Lord didn't say that you couldn't drink. He said, drunkenness is not the, drunkenness is the sin. They call it wine and spirits because once you consume too much of it, then that real spirit, the spirit of Satan, devil, go take over. And you cannot depart from it. Let's go to St. John 10, and we're going to read one verse. St. John, the 10th chapter. I love this word of God. I love it. Because it's, it's guidance. People say, Bible, B-I-B-L-E, basic instruction before leaving earth. Uh-uh. B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before life eternal. Because you're going to live forever. And you're going to be on this earth. It's just a matter of being on the right side of the kingdom, in God's kingdom, or in the junkyard, which is the lake of fire. St. John 10, and read verse 10, Dan. Go ahead. The thief cometh not. But for to steal and to kill and to destroy, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundant. Now, people think that means getting material wealth. They have even built doctors off of it. 
It is a doctrine of error, sisters and brothers. The eternal, the abundant life that the Lord brought us is eternal life. The Father sent the Son to take our place on the cross so that we may have a right at life. But they come out eternal life. But we take it for granted. We have fixed it to our format to make it get that new car, get that new house, get all the money that you want, live deliciously. You still going to get old, wrinkled, and die and leave it to somebody else who's going to blow the mission? Look at all the people who win the lottery. A lot of them wish they have never won it. Pay attention. Be careful what you ask for. Do like the Lord's pray, prayer. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And everything else will be added unto you, sisters and brothers. Everything else will be added unto you. But what about the people that say, well, Brother Julius, I read Acts, the 10th chapter. Let's go there, Dan. And Peter saw a wild beast, uh, a, a sheet let down from heaven with all manner of wild beasts. And it says, rise, Peter, slay and eat. Peter said, not so, Lord. I have never eaten anything common or unclean. But Peter had a vision. That was a vision that the Lord was showing him. Let's show you what this visioning uh, is. Let's get to the meat of the matter, Dan. Acts chapter 10. On your own, sisters and brother, write these scriptures down and go them on your own time. We don't have the time today. Acts chapter 10 and read verse 34. Acts chapter 10 and verse 34. Go ahead, Dan. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Yes. But in every nation he had... That feareth him and yes. worketh righteousness yes. is accepted with him. Go ahead. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word I say ye know, which was published throughout all Judea, and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed That's Jesus. That's good right there. Back up and read verse 28 and read it. Because they said, Peter said, uh, the Lord said, what God has cleansed called not thou... Common, uncommon. Go ahead. And he said unto them. Yes, this is the whole meaning of the scripture. You cannot start in the middle of a scripture and get the whole meaning. Read up a little bit. Read down a little bit. Go ahead, Dan. Look at the meaning of Acts, the 10th chapter, about rise, Peter, slay, the Gentiles are considered beasts or wild beasts in the Bible. Nebuchadnezzar, the lion. The Medo-Persians, the bear. The Greeks, the leopard with the four wings. And then that dreadful and terrible beast, the Roman Empire. This is talking about nations. Has nothing to do with food. Verse 26, uh, Dan, 28. go ahead. 28. 28, go ahead. And he said unto them, Ye know how that is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company. Yes. Or come unto one of another nation. Yes. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Cornelius was a Gentile that wanted to know about the true and living God. So the Lord sent an angel and told him, go find Peter and the Israelite and he'll tell you what you need to do to save yourself and your house. So Cornelius obeyed and now Peter understands the meaning of the vision. God has shown me that whosoever will, let him come. If they want to seek the true and living God, you don't call them common or unclean. Once they accept this gospel, once they accept this doctrine, now they're part of the God family. So God has shown me not to call any man common or unclean. It has nothing to do with food. Nothing to do with food, sisters and brothers. Let's go to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Hebrews the 10th chapter. We'll go through there real quick. Back up to Hebrew. Go to, uh, to Hebrews the 10th chapter. These are instructions. This Bible is instructions in righteousness. Hebrews 10, Dan, and start reading at verse 5. Read verse 5 only. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. Yes. But a body has thou prepared me. But a body has thou prepared me. Skip down to verse 22 and read it. Let us draw near with the true heart. Yes. In full assurance of faith. Yes. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Now that's talking about the pure water of the word of God. You see how the dietary law and the word of God fits together? It works together. Go ahead, Dan. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Without wavering, go ahead. For he is faithful that promise. Skip down to uh, 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 26 and read it. For if we sin willfully after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. Yes. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. Now, if you want to continue eating the unclean things, you are willfully sinning. The Lord is the one that dictated what was clean and what was unclean. 
If you want to disobey the Lord's commandments, you will be disinherited. Continue, Dan. 27. Yes. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation. Yes. Which shall devour the adversary. You want to eat the swine? You want to eat the catfish? You want to eat the shrimp? And, uh, and void the God's dietary law? You may as well just not keep the Ten Commandments. Because the result is the same. The lake of fire is the same. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go to Hebrew, uh, uh, Isaiah, the 65th chapter. People don't believe the things that are written in this book. They don't believe it. And they, I like what Stevie Wonder said in that song. Very superstitious. When you believe in things that you don't understand, you suffer. But then when you understand and willfully, willfully depart from things that are written, you still going to suffer. I didn't write it. I got that bye bye too, sisters and brothers. That is a two edged sword. One side to cut the people, one side to cut the preacher. Either way it go, it cuts. 65, and start reading that verse 2, Dan. Go ahead. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people. Yes. Which walketh in a way that was not good after their own thoughts. Yes. A people that provoketh me to anger continually to my face. Go ahead. They sacrifice, they sacrifice it in gardens. Yes. And burneth incense upon altars of brick. Yes. Which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments. Which eat swine's flesh. Which eat what? Swine's flesh. Go ahead. And broth of abominable things is in their vessels. So everything that you call clean. According to your understanding, the law says it's abominable. But you eat it. And you're in these monuments or what you call these churches, which the law calls the houses of the dead. Because you are spiritually dead. When you depart from the law, statutes, and precepts of God, you are spiritually dead. Dead men and dead women and children walking. I didn't write it. Your problem is with God. Continue, Dan. Which say, stand by thyself. Yes. Come not near to me. For I'm holier than thou. These are a smoke in my nose. You know what? When you say yeah, I'm holier than you, you are self-righteous. The Lord is talking about church people. It's the church people that come in the name of the Lord. It's the church people that say, stand up. You can't touch me. I'm holier. I know the Lord. You better read what the Lord told them church people at judgment. Depart. Lord, did we do this in your name? Lord, did we did many wonderful we were works in your name? We cast out demons in your name. He gonna say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I'm not just now knowing you. I never knew you. People say, well, Brother Julie, you have an attitude. Yeah, I do. But you know what? If I boast, it's a righteous boast. Because I know the results of what happens to people who deviate from the word of God. They get to suffer. What verse we at, Dan? Uh, end of five. End of five? Yeah. Continue. These are smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all the day. So you eating that, the, you eating that swine? You eating all that pig and the catfish and the shrimp and the lobster? The Lord say, I don't care how you go on your knees. You are a smoke in my nostril. You are an irritant to me. And the Lord deals with fools. It's not personal. It's the word of God. I didn't write it. Go ahead, Dan. Behold. It is written before me. Yes. I will not keep silent. Yes. But will recompense. Yes. Even recompense into their bosom. Go ahead. Your iniquities and the iniquities of your fathers together, saith the Lord, which have burned incense upon the mountains and blasphemed me upon the hills. Yes. Therefore will I measure their former work into their bosom. I'm going to pay you back for your works. I'm going to judge every man according as his works shall be. You may get by for a long time, but you don't get away, sisters and brothers. Pray God that your Good outweigh your bad. 65th chapter of Isaiah. Go ahead. 66th chapter. 66. And we're going to read verse 15 through 17. Isaiah 66, 15 through 17. Again, self-righteous, holy people, church folks. Go ahead. For behold, the Lord, the Lord will come with fire. Yes. And with his chariots like a whirlwind. Yes. To winter his anger with fury. Yes. And his rebuke with flames of fire. Yes. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. You know when the Lord said he going to plead with you, he going to do some killing. Oh, yeah, that sweet Jesus that you done made a power puff. The sweet Jesus that you said the Lord led everybody. He coming. And he coming to kill, sisters and brothers. He ain't coming as a lamb no more to be killed. He going to do the killing, and I want to be on his side. Go ahead. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. Look look who you're talking to. Go ahead. They that sanctify themselves. So now you done sanctified yourself. Well, you just pray over it and make it clean. Impossible. So you sanctify yourselves, sisters and brothers, and in doing that, you are interpreting the word of God and making the word of God that is written of none effect. 
Not going to happen like that. Go ahead. And purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst. Eating swine's flesh. Eating what? Swine's flesh. Notice, in all the commercials, they just stay adding bacon, 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 bacon. Pork, pork, pork. All the other white meat. But yet people is dying. They got animals, and you're playing with the seeds, and you're playing with everything. Seedless grapes, seedless watermelon. But the Lord told you every seed out this kind, every herb out this kind, bury seed. So now you fixing the word of God, he going to fix you. He going to fix you in the end. Time going to tell everything. Finish this, Dad. And the mouth shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. Go ahead. For I know their works and their thoughts. Yes. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. But when you see it, you're going to see it on the lake of fire side, which is heaven's junkyard. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter again. 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter again. This is my job as a minister is to warn the people from God. My job is not to execute the law. My job is to put the law of God on the table. Do with it what you want. First Corinthians. We're going to read First Corinthians 10 and 1 verse. Verse 31. Go ahead, Dan. Whether therefore ye eat yes. or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Pay attention to that. Read it again. I want the world to understand this. Read it again, Dan. Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do. Do all to the glory of God. But see, he's talking about righteous people. What you eat and what you do, do all to the glory of God. Because the dietary law is for the glory of God, which is for your glory. And in the end, in the end you will have eternal life, sisters and brothers. So the dietary law is for your good. The word of God is for your good. So the dietary law is predicated upon the word of God. So God's menu is his word, which is his food. His whole is, is for health, for your health. It is designed for longevity and eventually eternal life. Satan's menu, Satan's menu is unclean, unholy, designed to kill, and is abominable to God. Thank you for your time. We would like to invite you to join us on the Sabbath Day Live via the Internet. Log on to our website, which is www.theisraelofgod.com. Click on the link Sabbath Day Live on our homepage. You will need Windows Media Player to view our program. We stream live twice every Sabbath at 10 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. Central Time. Also, if you're in the Chicago area, please feel free to join us at our study class located at 2515 East 75th Street here in Chicago. Thank you.